Okay, this sermon is entitled, Why Do Some Unsaved People Seem So Devoted? I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 64 reads, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Now, there are lots of people out there that think they're saved, and in fact they're not. It's because they have a false zeal, or they're on, they're on fire, so-called, but it's not based on um, biblical truth. Now, if you turn over to Romans chapter 10, we have an example of this. In verse 1, it reads, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that, have, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, the number one reason people will put on this front or this facade of being full of avidity or full of ardency or fervency is because they're trying to look like they're a mature Christian. They want people to think that they're at some high echelon in the Christian faith when in fact they're just as lost as the devil. And it's a good way to fool people. Number two, they want to be masterful at deceiving people. Nobody's going to fall for somebody that's bankrupt or derelict of, of biblical knowledge. And when you have some false prophet out there that seems to know the scripture, you know, very, you know, <clears throat> deftly, it seems to fool people. Number three, the reason why people are so full of this, this false devotion is so that you won't evangelize them. Nobody's going to go up to somebody that, that's been to church their whole life with a perfect attendance. They're, they're there three times a week, and they seem to, seem to be very holy, very, you know, righteous. Nobody's going to go up to them and give them the gospel. Okay, number four, it gives Satan glory. See, if a person was trusting in Christ alone for salvation, like it reads in verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth, that would give God glory because Jesus Christ is the only Savior. But when a person is trusting in their self, their filthy rags righteousness, and their own works and human merit, it gives Satan glory. Okay, number five is pride. People are just full of themselves, you know, because they have a, they have a pride issue. Number six is to keep them lost. People will not come to the realization that they're that they're a sinner, that they're an you know an unsaved, lost person if they think that they're so you know hyper spiritual and whatnot. And finally, number seven is to cause babes in Christ or carnal newbie Christians to feel like they're not saved. People want to compare themselves to one another. They say, well, this guy over here is like this this super Christian. He has a you know an incredible walk with God, and he's out doing all these you know, spiritual things, well, I must not be saved at all because I don't even match that. Well, it's garbage. The only thing that saves a person is you know, trusting in Jesus Christ alone. It's not based on how you live or, or how you feel or any of these emotions. It's not based on your, you know, your pseudo-devotion. Okay? Salvation is based on the grace of God and that alone. So watch out for people that, that are trying to come across as being you know, like a super devout holier-than-thou, highfalutin Christian, when in fact it's all just a big act. It's a charade. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.